Hey, you clicked on my video. Appreciate it. Now be sure to like the video and subscribe to the page. Long enough to cover the subject and short enough to keep it interesting. Welcome to Out of My League. I'm Nick Diaz. I have a theory about preseason football camps. College preseason camps are way more exciting than NFL preseason camps. Most of the time, on average, they usually are. And the reason is, I think, because college players, they leave every three years. Or you have four- and fifth-year guys that may play over five-star freshmen just because he's more mature. And so you aren't sure how good the freshman is yet until their sophomore or junior year. Plus, there's always a new quarterback, the most exciting position that everybody cares about the most. He changes every two years in college. As opposed to the NFL... Same guys, year in and year out, same star players, because you're going to sign them to long-term extensions, with the exception of maybe rookies. But that's only like four out of five players. That's why during the Drew Brees era, Sean Payton era, I've never found training camp with the Saints to be that exciting most years, because it's the same star players, system, storylines, except for last season. Last year, it was the newness and a lot of worry. But that also made it still very exciting. And this year could be even more exciting when it comes to preseason camp. Because there is a newness, but also there's not worry, there's hope. And the new additions of star players like LSU guys and Tyron Matthew and Jarvis Landry, uh, that's made it uh, heighten even more. One, because they're good players at positions of need, and they're Louisiana guys who played at LSU. But instead of focusing on all the good stuff, let me focus on the problems that we need to look at for the Saints in preseason camp. And problem number one that I think needs to be answered going into camp is health. The health of the players that are coming off of injury. So these are all the players that are coming off an injury. Either they're fully recovered or not quite yet. Jameis Winston, Michael Thomas, Marcus Davenport, Taysom Hill, Marcus May, and Peyton Turner. Now, it is being cleared right now that Taysom Hill and Marcus May will both be taken off the pup list and ready to go full speed in practice tomorrow. But let's start with the most important guy that's currently on the player unable to physically perform. That's Michael Thomas. This is one of those moments on social media where I see everyone freak out, but I just kind of look at my phone and go, why? Why are y'all freaking out? I mean, he hasn't played full-time in, like, the last two years. There are still videos of him running full speed, catching balls, but he hasn't really practiced or gotten hit in two seasons. Honestly, I'd be a little concerned if the Saints did let him practice at the beginning of camp. I mean, this is just standard procedure that damn near every star player goes through. But don't take it from me. Take it from Mickey Loomis when asked about Michael Thomas being on the pup list. Yeah, he's just, look, I don't expect him to be on there very long, but... um... Just not quite ready to, to be full go yet. So, But I don't, I don't anticipate him being on that list for very long. Would you describe this as a setback? No. No, not at all. See? So there's no need for Saints fans to worry about Michael Thomas at this point. Just standard procedure. Now, the second player that uh, you have to look at when it comes to health is Peyton Turner. Remember him? He was your first-round pick last season, but he just got overshadowed because, like everyone else, he was hurt. Nobody really had a chance to see what he was capable of doing because of that. He missed extended time in training camp. Uh, The team held him out for a preseason contest. He wasn't able to play until, like, week two. Uh, And then when he did play, though, he played well, but it was just in five games. Now, the third thing I want to see is tight end. Really the last position, starting position for the Saints that still has some question marks. Every other position on the Saints starters, depth or not, pretty much is ready to go. I mean, I guess you could say Jameis Winston, but I mean, I feel more confident about him being a starting NFL quarterback than most of the media does. But tight end is the one starting position on the Saints roster that hasn't quite been answered. You have Taysom Hill, Adam Troutman, and Jawan Johnson, and maybe Nick Vanette as well as a fourth guy to uh, add a body. Now, they kind of all are put into two groups. The guys who finally need to show up, like specifically Adam Troutman, and the guys who are relatively new to the position but are finally getting their legs under them as tight ends, Jawan Johnson, and especially Taysom Hill. Now, Adam Troutman 
This is Troutman's third year going into the NFL. Third year after trading up to get him in the third round out of Dayton. It's time to put up or shut up with his expectations. Now, to be fair, Troutman suffered an injury before last season, along with half the Saints roster, it felt like it. And when he did start to get back into a groove after recovering from the injuries, he got hurt again, because of course he did. So I'll give him a pass now, but if he stays healthy and he's still not producing like you want him to be, and he's still inconsistent, then, uh, you know, you kind of are what you are, I think, at this point. Now, how good can Taysom Hill be when he's solely focusing on playing one position, specifically tight end? I think very well. Matter of fact, really well. Matter of fact, I've been saying this whole time that Taysom Hill should have been a tight end from day one, a position that he's played rather well when he has, even when he's not practicing at it full time, which now he will be. So I'm more bullish on Taysom Hill than most. Now, when it comes to Jawan Johnson, he's played well in spots, seeing as he is also new to the position. Coming out of college, he was a wide receiver, put on some more weight. But he's made some plays in spots when he needs to. But the fourth thing, running backs. Specifically, the second running back behind Alvin Kamara, who we don't know when the suspension will be, and maybe it's six games, maybe it's not. Who the hell knows? Mark Ingram, as your second running back, I think he's going to be fine at 32 years old. I think he's still capable. He showed that last year. But the problem is that he's 32 years old. And Alvin Kamara will be probably out for six weeks, at least. Now, during preseason camp, you have to look for that other running back. I think the one you have to look out for is the undrafted free agent out of Baylor, Abram Smith. Let's see if all that guaranteed money you gave for an undrafted free agent... Let's see if it actually shows up in the preseason. That's the first place to start. Preseason isn't everything, but it's usually something. Now, the Saints did just sign free agent Malcolm Brown, different than the Malcolm Brown you have on the defensive line. Um, Free agent, been in the league nine years. Nice player. Uh, They're giving him a shot. Uh, For those of you wondering about his recent production, he was with the Miami Dolphins last season. 3.8 yards per carry on 33 attempts. Not great, but then again, so was Miami's entire offense, was putrid, utterly putrid. Now, his best season that he had as a pro was 2020, very recently, with the Los Angeles Rams. He had over 400 yards rushing and over 100 yards receiving with the Rams. Now, maybe this is just a classic case of he's only a good player when you actually put him on a good team and he can be productive with a good offensive line. Could be that, could not be. But either way, it gives you options. But my big thing with the second running back is Abram Smith. And the fifth thing, the last thing that I think all of us look at going into pretty much every single preseason camp is the rookie draft picks. Now, if you had to pick one to watch this camp, one rookie, one rookie draft pick that you had to watch in the preseason, which one would it be? Which one would you watch? See, it's too easy to say Chris Olave because he was the top pick. Uh, he's the, at a sexy position, a skill player position that everyone can see. Um, but more importantly, he's also not that big of a need considering that you have Jarvis Landry and you have Michael Thomas coming back who's not really of a big concern as far as his health. So to me, it's kind of easy what the answer is. It's Trevor Penning. I mean, nobody on the Saints roster has a bigger task than Trevor Penning. He has to replace Teron Armstead. I mean, I don't care if he came from Iowa, Northern Iowa, or Ohio State. He has to be able to protect the blind side as a rookie for Jameis Winston. Can he? Yeah, sure he can. But if there's still growing pains in the preseason, which there may be, um, he doesn't necessarily have to start the season. Because the good news is you have a very capable veteran, James Hurst, to step in. But make no mistake, Trevor Penning is the future. And one more thing that Mickey Loomis shared when talked about the Saints roster as a whole. I think our team feels confident, but yeah, we're not we're not a rebuild. This isn't a rebuild. Um, I guess is the best way to describe it. So, yeah, we think we can win now. For those of you who don't watch a lot of Mickey Loomis press conferences, he's rarely this blunt. He was today, and I think it's because this is the most exciting and new and hopeful preseason camp the Saints have had in quite some time. Thanks for listening to Out of My League. If you like what you heard, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, or follow me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok in the description link below.